me after reading James chapter 2. <sighs> Let's get into this this week guys. Welcome back to my channel if you are a returning uh, viewer. If you're not, I really appreciate you clicking on this video and watching guys. Let's get into James chapter 2. Again, we are in the series Religion versus Relationship and this book is going to teach us how to differentiate between the two Woo! especially in James chapter 2 now if you're familiar with any teaching about faith and works then this is the chapter for you this is the chapter that you have heard so much about regarding the teaching of faith and works today we're going to dig into it and get more in-depth studying time um about what exactly that is and how we express our faith through our works and how our works complement our faith. All right, so James chapter two and verse one, it starts by saying, my brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Partiality is sin in God's eyes, guys. So if we prefer something or someone, or actually someone rather, over another person for any reason, um, as it pertains to our righteousness in Christ as it pertains to um, getting along with people and truly living out the gospel then how can we say we love God how can we say that we are followers of Christ and this specifically denounces partiality so if you've ever been partial with somebody it's okay to repent of that and ask Jesus actually it's advised to repent of that and ask Jesus to help you in that area but this completely denounces uh, the, the concept of partiality regarding anybody. So let's go into detail about what that looks like. We're going to start at verse 3 and read through verse 4. It says, And if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, You sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, You stand over there uh, or sit, sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Mm. Mm. I love how it didn't just stop at and become judges because we highlight so much as Christians and these are the ones who are calling out believers, calling out uh, worldly people and um, truly living out the title of being a judge. So it's important for us to be a good judge of things and of people but when we differentiate between people and when we uh, give people of a certain caliber a certain ear um, before we give other people of a different caliber an ear then we become judges with evil thoughts mm. Mm, 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 mm. and let us not dare think that we are uh, immune to sin or I said immune but let us not dare think that we can't um, let us not have so much pride to where we think that we are above reproach that we are above um, you know the certain cer certain things like you know holding distinctions and, and showing partiality between people sometimes it's important for us to not think of ourselves too highly as scripture says um let us not dare think that we are not capable of such thing and it's always important for us to remain humble in this area um and to not lift someone up higher than the other okay so that's the sin of partiality that's an example of um the partiality that this chapter denounces and says look don't do that are you not a judge of evil thoughts if you uh give a man of a certain caliber in this case is a rich man uh, a good place but then you tell the poor man to go sit at your feet or sit in this place in a different place than the rich man do they not belong in the same place as if they are do they not belong in the same should we not treat people the same basically um in some sense and that is how you fulfill the law so we're going to get into verses 8 and 9. It says, if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You're doing well. But if you show partiality, you're committing sin and you are convicted by the law as transgressors. Plain and simple. 
I don't really have to describe that one. Basically, you fulfill the law when you love. The whole law is fulfilled within love. That's why Jesus was able to fulfill the law because he loved the Father and the Father loved us. And as a result, love took him to the cross. Love raised him from the dead. Love uh, uh, intercedes on our behalf daily as we walk this journey of faith, as we live out our lives for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the kingdom, as we make mistakes and are able to get back up, love covers us. The scripture that says love covers a multitude of sins, oh, I love reflecting on that because love truly keeps us aware and keeps us in perspective in regards to our faith journey, especially when it comes to people and everyday relationships we have. So if you really want to fulfill the law, if you really want to live up to the righteousness of God, if you really want to fulfill, uh, if you want to become like Jesus, like Christ, then you shall love, or love, la, la, la. <laughs> love your neighbor as yourself. You're doing well. Then you show no partiality. But when you show partiality, you're committing sin and you're convicted by the law as transgressors. Moving on. To verse 14 this is where we get into faith and works and in light of everything we just read verse 14 says what good is it my brothers if someone says he has faith but does not have works can that faith save him so again let's focus on this faith and works type thing so in the previous verses that I just read we focused on um, partiality and how we should love and not show partiality um, with people so in light of that, it says if someone says he has faith but does not have works, so if you claim to be a, a believer in Jesus Christ, but you're showing this partiality or you're not being obedient to the law or rather Jesus who fulfilled the law, and if you're not reflecting the love of God in your relationships with people, in everything that you do, then can your faith save you? How? It does not show that you have faith based on your actions, based on your disobedience, your lack of honoring God in that area. Let's keep reading. Verse 18 through 20. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Hmm. I'm going to read verse 20 in the Amplified Classic Version. It says, are you willing to be shown proof, you foolish, unproductive, spiritually deficient fellow, that faith apart from good works is inactive and ineffective and worthless? Oh, the conviction. <laughs> but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. How foolish, how foolish. Basically, uh, this person believes that faith comes by works, but that's foolish. Faith and works operate together. You cannot operate according to the spirit unless you have faith. and your works tell of your faith. So they work together. And by works, it's not morality. It's not doing good. Not simply doing good. But rather, it's being obedient to the Father. Obedience. Acting according to love. And operating by the fruit of the Spirit. Like those things are the works that this chapter refers to. And not simply just helping people because the world does that all the time it's important for us to understand that our faith leads us to help people for the sake of the kingdom our faith leads us to love people for the sake of the kingdom our faith leads us to not show partiality to people for the sake of the kingdom but to operate by love and in the spirit of love and in verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness and he was called a friend of God. Abraham, who did not have uh, the covenant of grace during his lifetime, who did not or was not able to 
experienced the lifetime of Jesus Christ while he lived, believed God, even in his day, even under the law. He saw what God was attempting to do. And therefore, as a result, it was counted to him as righteousness. What was counted to him as righteousness? His faith. And as a result of his faith, he did. He obeyed. He loved. He walked by faith. He did everything because of his faith. And he was called a friend of God. And in verse 26 it says, For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. They work together, y'all. They accomplish the good of the kingdom in this earth. Faith and works operate together. As a result of your faith, you do. You act. Your faith always leads you to act. And I love this phrase. It says, right believing produces right living. Not the other way around. Right believing produces right living. So when you believe in Jesus, when you operate by his authority, by his uh his way of thinking and and loving and operating by the spirit then that leads you and that compels you and that pushes you to choose love over everything and to not be partial as this man was or as the example was in the beginning of this chapter this week i'm studying james chapter 2 join me i am going to be studying out loud on facebook on twitter on instagram on youtube and on pinterest guys I'm excited to study more about this. Later on in the week, I will also be doing another live video. If you didn't catch the first one, then join me later this week. I'm going to aim for Thursday, but if not Thursday, it'll be either Wednesday or Friday. I know that's a wide range, but around those times, just look out for my video. On Instagram, you'll have 24 hours to check it out in my story. Give me your feedback. Give me your comments. Let me know how you're encouraged by what you're reading as well. And y'all, as you read and as you grow, in this journey with God, you're going to grow in grace and read by faith, y'all. Read and trust the Holy Spirit to reveal God to you as you read. Until next time, bye.